Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby and today I'm doing my weekly reading wrap up from May 6th to the 12th. Today I'm filming this on Sunday, which is Mother's Day here in the US. I had a wonderful day with my husband and our daughter and if you celebrate Mother's Day, I hope you had a wonderful day. So I will link all of the books down below that I read. I would love to hear if you guys have read them and let's get right into it. The first book that I read is A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner. This is, I think, probably one of her most popular books and it has been on my shelves for a really long time and it's the only physical Candy Steiner book I own, but it is available through Kindle Unlimited if you have that subscription. And this one is a super angsty new adult turning into adult romance. This is about a girl named B who when she's a junior in high school she meets a guy named Jamie and she's instantly attracted to him but he's super off limits because he starts dating her best friend but he's a senior in high school so he's about to leave for college and when he does B accepts that she'll never see him again but B is super surprised when she goes off to college the following year and discovers that Jamie is also at her college in California. They both moved from Florida to California to go to college so she's really surprised that he is at hers. And of course there are still feelings there and she thinks that he likes her, but she has a boyfriend so it's definitely not good timing. So it follows them for the next decade or so, kind of them coming together and being pulled apart and it never being the right moment and it's full of drama and angst and you just want them to be together. But then I was so frustrated by B. She is not the most likable character. Yes, she's pretty real, but not the most likable character by far. And I enjoyed the ending and I enjoyed the story, but I don't think it deserves as much hype as it gets. I think some of Candy Steiner's other books are way better than this one, but I still ended up giving it four stars because I did like it. And if you're in the mood for angst, pick this one up. The next book that I read is The One by John Mars. I actually read this as a buddy read with Nicole from the Girly Girl Bookworm. Also my friend Beth from Beth and the Books. She also read it this week and so I was talking about it with both of them and we all really enjoyed it. Both Nicole and I think that this was not really a thriller. It's classified as a sci-fi thriller and it is sci-fi but I think it is definitely more suspense than thriller. It is about this dating service, like an online dating service called Match Your DNA, where instead of just selecting people you wanna date online, you are linked to your perfect DNA match and you get an email when they find your match after they collect your DNA. And it is responsible for tons of marriages because people know it's their exact match, but it's also responsible for tons of divorces because you could be married and then be curious about your match and discover that the person you're married to is not your DNA match. And it follows five different people, two men, three women, and their experience using this service. I really like that each chapter was really short. At first I had a hard time following the five different people, but I picked up on it pretty quick. And what's really great is each chapter leaves on a cliffhanger, so you're wanting to find out what happens to each character next. And I thought this was really, really good. I don't really know what I was expecting, but I loved the sci-fi element. It's not like really heavy on sci-fi, it's just this DNA matching is sci-fi. And I thought that was really unique. I really enjoyed this book. It is full of really unlikable characters, so if you don't like unlikable characters, this isn't for you. But that didn't bother me whatsoever. I think Nicole and I rated it roughly the same. I think she gave it four stars or four and a half. I gave it 4.25. It wasn't my all-time new favorite suspense or thriller, but I thought it was so good and I, like I said, I love the sci-fi element. The next book that I read is an ARC. It is called The Women by S.E. Lines. This follows a college student named Samantha and she starts dating a college professor. His name is Peter and everyone thinks he is so charming and handsome and he's definitely older than Samantha by like 20 years. And she is so smitten when she discovers he likes her. And he's super classy, he drinks wine, he has a beautiful house, he's just really sophisticated, listens to jazz, drives a sports car, and he definitely gets her under his spell. And they start dating and they have a baby together. And after Samantha has the baby, she starts teaching a course for creative writing. And she starts receiving in her class these notes. And they are like poems and little short stories and they're kind of threatening and insinuating that her spouse is not a good person and it starts to make her question all that she knows about Peter and you see that maybe things are not so peachy with Peter 
and her relationship with him is not perfect and she's kind of putting on the blinders like we know that he's a bad person but she has these blinders on with him she doesn't want to see the negative side because she has a baby and it kind of follows their story and you're wondering how it's going to end and I thought this was really good I did think the first half was slow the second half picked up and was quicker but I felt the ending was rushed and I wish that it was fleshed out a little bit more so for that reason I ended up giving it three and a half stars the next book that I read is Entwined With You by Sylvia Day. This is the third book in the Crossfire series and I've been meaning to get to this for months so I'm so happy I got to it. Fortunately I did not like this one as much as the other two but I do plan on finishing the series. I think it has a total of five books. So this continues off right where book number two left off and it follows Eva and Gideon and Gideon did something really crazy in order to protect Eva and now because of that they are unable to be publicly dating so they're just secretly dating and it's full of drama and mostly sex scenes it does not have a lot of plot in this book not a lot happens I don't think it spans over a lot of time but it's a lot of just like drama where something will make Gideon mad or something will make Eva mad and then they end up having sex. So didn't love it. I will continue with the series, but I gave this one three stars. The next book that I read is The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. I read The Invited by Jennifer McMahon a couple of months ago and loved it. It was a ghost story set in Vermont. And like The Invited, The Winter People takes place in a small town in Vermont called West Hall. And this is a town that has a big legend about a woman named Sarah Harrison who back in 1908 had a really tragic death. And she was known around the town for being able to see dead people. And after she died, the residents thought that Sarah was haunting them for years. And so years later, her niece submitted her diary and published it. And it has been a huge thing in the town, people having this diary. And so you're seeing through the perspective of the diary back in 1908 and also currently, I think it was 2015, so almost a century later. So you're jumping back and forth timeline. So the 2015 timeline follows two different people. The first is a 19 year old girl named Ruthie and she lives in West Hall and she discovers that her mother is missing, doesn't know where her mother went. And so she starts looking around her house with her little sister to try to get clues. And she discovers that her house that she lives in is the house that Sarah Harrison grew up in and lived in and died at. So there's a lot of creepy things going on at that house and they discover her diary. And so she's one of the characters currently, as well as a woman named Catherine, whose husband just died. And she lives in Boston, but she picks up her life and moves to West Hall because she learns that her husband spent his last day alive in West Hall. And she really wants to know what happened. When she looks through his belonging, he finds a copy of Sarah Harrison's diary. And so you're jumping back and forth between 1908 as well as currently in 2015 and you're trying to put the pieces together wondering how they're going to connect how is Ruthie and Catherine's stories connecting and this was a great ghost story I'm usually not a paranormal reader but this really works for me it's a creepy crawly ghost story definitely don't want to read it in the dark highly recommend this one I gave it four stars the next book that I read is by Christina Lauren. It is my favorite half night stand. I got this one from my library and this is a really cute romantic comedy. It is about a girl named Millie and she is one of the guys. She is a professor at UC Santa Barbara and she has four best guy friends and they have been friends for a couple of years and all of them kind of are too busy to date. They love their jobs and don't date a whole lot. Well she is best best friends with Reed. He is one of the guys. And after a lot of wine one night, Millie and Reed hook up, but they don't want to ruin their friendship group, so they decide not to tell their friends. And a few months out, they have this big gala going on at work, and none of them have dates, none of them are dating anyone, and so they decide to sign up for an online dating site, and this is after Millie and Reed hook up and they're starting to talk to people. It's pretty entertaining. And of course, Millie makes a fake profile and she matches with Reed and she doesn't tell him. And so of course you follow this crazy situation and you kind of see where it's going, but it was a lot of fun. I love it. I really like Christina Lauren's writing. I think they are a great author duo and they always have some really fun romantic comedies. And I gave this one four stars. The next book that I read is an arc and it's called The Favorite Daughter by Kara Ruda and this is about a woman named Jane who is a mother and a housewife 
and she has two daughters named Mary and Betsy but unfortunately Mary died a year ago and ever since Jane has been pretty messed up the family has been torn apart but Jane is trying really hard to keep her family together even though her daughter and husband want nothing to do with her and you know that she struggles with some mental health issues and she's not the most reliable narrator to say the least and she is holding some secrets and she is one of the only people she thinks knows what happened to Mary on her last day but she's wrong. She starts receiving these notes and someone is stalking her and kind of threatening her and you're kind of wondering what's going to happen. Um, didn't love this one. I'm not a huge fan of this style of book. It reminds me a lot of The Perfect Girlfriend by Karen Hamilton and The Flight Attendant by Chris Bahalian. But I didn't love those books at all. One I gave three stars, one I gave two and a half. And so this one I ended up giving it three stars. I didn't love the narrator. I just didn't find it very compelling. And I wasn't really shocked by the ending. I totally saw it coming. So it wasn't a favorite. Like I said, gave it three stars. The next book that I read is actually a set of novellas by J.R. Ward. It is called The Wedding from Hell and it consists of the rehearsal and the reception, which are prequels to her Consumed series. So I have consumed on my shelves, but when I was looking into reading it, a lot of people said you want to read these first. And at first this was only released as an audiobook, but they just released the ebook this month, so I was finally able to get around to reading it. And this follows two firefighters, well kind of a group of firefighters, but the main two characters are Anne and Danny, and they are co-workers. They are both firefighters together in the same precinct, and they are members of this bridal party for one of the guys who's getting married and of course a lot of drama happens at the rehearsal dinner at the reception and there's a romance going on between Danny and Anne but of course there's drama and I have a feeling that it's just gonna bleed into consumed because consumed is about Anne and I'm assuming it's about Anne and Danny but this backstory will help us understand the story more so I did really enjoy these they were super short and I ended up giving them three and a half four stars the last book that I read is a heart and a body in the world by Deb Coletti I've heard nothing but great things about this book I've heard it super impactful and emotional and I definitely agree this is about a high school senior named Annabelle who one year ago survived a terrible incident a terrible tragedy and ever since she's been pretty depressed and now she's graduating high school School and she decides that she wants to run cross-country from Seattle to Washington DC and she thinks she will make a difference she needs to do it for her own mental health and healing but it's a huge feat and a lot of people think she won't be able to do it but as many people think she won't be able to a lot of people support her and want her to do it and she doesn't just run across the country she actually has her grandpa following her in his RV so it's them kind of road tripping slash her running and this is such an emotional story it had me crying quite a bit and it's really hard hitting I think that it's a really important story I can't really say too much else about the plot line because it would give kind of the ending away but it is a quiet read but it has a really loud message and I highly recommend this one I ended up giving it four and a half stars so those are all the books that I read this week I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys on my next one bye